Job there the other day, and I Ooh. found a knot. Um, okay, you didn't find those PlayStation One games I was asking about, <laughs> did you? <laughs> there somewhere in that actually. All right, yeah, cool. Uh, uh, I didn't find them, but what I did do was I found a knot. I, I had almost forgotten about this. This was about the time that we went to Prague together uh, in the Czech Republic. Do you remember that time? Yeah, I think I, I'm getting another little. <laughs> Just a little blip of my old amnesia. Where uh, oh yeah, it's it's amazing, Robert. The amount of adventures we've gone on together that I have no recollection of. Well, there's a lot of sort of supernatural goings on with you. We we have the mm. top of Cornwallis going yeah. around sword fighting around Wexford Town. We have uh, the Skinwalker story that you completely forgot about. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a lot of things. But I know the luckily, time we went to to haunted Prague together. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good job that I I am such a I, I write notes so feverishly I, I oh, get, yeah, and, yeah. and have all this the lads, you know uh, the lads have a nickname for you they call you the Chronicler Billington yeah 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 mm. that's right that is but, right but yeah so I'm gonna just read this note for you about yourself and our audience here so they know what the crack and it looks like I, it was done in the form of a poem as well it just so happens um, that's shocking but, yeah <laughs> exploring Prague with Eamon when we find a castle it's big and scary to get in is a hassle. We knock on the door three times or so. To infiltrate, you'd have to be a pro. <laughs> All of a sudden, an apparition appears. It acts a bit off. Its mannerisms are queer. Um, queer as in unusual. Um, not not the Twitter type of queer. Oh no, we've been can- <laughs> we're cancelled, aren't we? We're cancelled. Yeah. Eamon, Eamon tries the Kung Fu chop. And it passes right through. Oh. It it laughs and covers Eamon with its goo. Mm, ectoplasm, yeah. Yeah. Eamon begins to cry. I tell him, shush, it's time to fly. We manage to escape to tell the tale. My favourite person is Davy the Snail. <laughs> And uh, that was just an, it was a nice note, actually. And yeah, about that time that we got off. Mm. So, do you have anything to add to that uh, I think scenario? I'm, kind of, I'm trying to channel. There's, oh. there's a part of me, I suppose, and it, it's lost all of these yeah. memories. Right. So I'm trying to. I'm just trying to tap into that. It's obviously in my psyche somewhere. Mm. You know, it's just it's tough to get to. You're so. in a, a liminal space. A liminal space. Yeah, we are sponsored by Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> Mickey's, and liminal spaces uh, <laughs> for all your for all your ghost furniture needs. Um, <laughs> Okay, hang on. So I'm gonna. I don't know. I don't know what way. I don't know what medium this mm. is gonna come out in. You know, I, it's I don't like know. in uh, Insidious when you're on the old one sits in the chair mm. and fucking yeah. whisper through the treetops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I like Mickey's whisper through the treetops. Mickey's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> No. Oh, my poor fucking roommate is like, what the fuck is going on? Um, right, uh, okay, okay, I'm trying to tap back in, I'm trying to tap back in. Oh. Okay, see, what I'm, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, right? I don't know what's going to mm. happen. It's closing my eyes now. We arrived at Prague on an airplane. Rob said, let's go to a strip bar lane. We oh. went in, the girls had no clothes. Rob started spending money like a pro. He said, can I have you, 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 and you too for a little lap dance? That's what I want to do. But they said, let's go to a place called Castle Huska. And there we'll show you a kabooska. So me and Rob mm. got into a little fight. <laughs> I said, Rob, what you doing just isn't right. But he went to the castle, knew full well, those cool strippers dragged him to hell. I actually really enjoyed that one. 
that was I kind of blacked out a bit. That might have to go on to our um, monsterful ZP, mm. I believe. Were you ever in a strip bar in Prague? No, I fucking wasn't. No. I was in several. Um, Were they good? Uh, no, man. Strip bars aren't nice to be in. Do you know what Not I mean? Cause it's like, weird. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. But I went into one with an ex of mine and like yeah. she started dancing on There was no one there. So she was like, <laughs> can I ever go on the pole? And they were like, yeah, whatever. And oh, then the other one was like, if you give us 10,000 crones, I'll do a lap dance for you and your girlfriend. And I was like, All right. no, thanks. This has got a bit of um, sir. But then when I went with our friend uh, who helped mm, make yes. the, the intro. Yes, and, and also bought a bag of ferns in Prague thinking it was weed, yeah, which, is a, bought, story, yeah, and got which is a story that ferns. I tell often to yeah, people. Story. Gas. But we went to one because I know he was getting over a breakup at the time and he was like, oh, mm. I just want to you know, do whatever. So that was fine. We went to Let off bar. some steam in the words yeah, of Baron yeah, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Let off some steam, Bennett. Bennett. Um, yeah. And that was grand. But we went into one and it actually turned out to be like a brothel. We didn't know. So, you know, they come over and they're like, OK, so like for a lap dance, it's X amount of all money, right, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And then all of a sudden she was like, and if you want this, that's X amount of crones. And I was like, shit, like I was I wasn't. You know, I was like, I yeah, don't you weren't about here. that. This life. Is, nah, mm. well, to be honest with you, look, I don't look. Whatever people do is what they do. Personally, right. I don't want to be paying money. For nah, you don't have to pay That's money for me. Minge, like, I don't know. Uh, but um, yeah, so that was that was a bit of a harrowing thing. And they was all like, when we got to the door, the guy was like, "Do you want to go to heaven or hell?" And we were like, uh, <laughs> and then we were looking at each other, and he was like, "Hell is where the guys are," and I was like, "Hell, I mean heaven." <laughs> <laughs> You went down to Billy Bomber in the hell section, did you? Yeah, yeah. Actually, sure, look, you have to see how the other half lives. <laughs> see if it's for you, you know? And it might be. And if it is, fucking more power to you, man. Go out there. Enjoy yourself. Um, All right. Um, it's actually time for the intro now, would yeah, you let's believe? Let's go with the intro. Yeah, okay. We, Good stuff. We, we are Monsterful's podcast. <laughs> My name is Davy the Snail, and with me is... Um, uh, tennis Ball Pringle Packet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Tennis Ball Pringle Packet. I know him well. Guys, um, we are on Patreon. Patreon. I forget this mixed up every time. <laughs> We're on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Monsterfuzz. So much juicy Monsterfuzz content there. Mm. You can really squeeze that orange and get all the monster juice. It's uh, um, it's just great. It's a, it's an awesome time. You know, we have our Discord. Fantastic, amazing stuff. The, the conversations mm. that will be going the on moment, there. At people are, are showing each other JPEGs of knives. <laughs> <laughs> on our Discord, which is pretty cool, and they're talking about gas station <laughs> knives and shit. Yeah, yeah, that's so. That's just a little sample of the like really riveting cryptozoology mm. conversation that goes on in I, our I Discord. I will say though, man, some of fucking Janny's stories, I was like, these are awesome. Yeah, like, it's those a, those little spooky stories he was telling. I I was all about that life. Basically, the Discord is like paying money to get verbally abused by me right now. So, like, we need more people. So, mm. it just sort of balances out. Like, poor Gianni posted a picture of his shoes yesterday and he was basically wearing bread bags. But mm. it was because he was so generous to us and supporting our Patreon. So, he, he doesn't actually, he can't afford proper shoes mm. anymore. You got a twofer as well because I have a pair of shoes like Gianni. So, you managed to. He he sort of gave you the alley oop to, to jeer me as well. You're like, You're going around the place with a big wooden phone like hey, Amo. <laughs> hey Rob, I'd say Rob just yeah. goes around. I say, you must I'd say you ring your girlfriend, do you? After and like, uh and sure yeah, we were all there and I was like, What do you think those clouds look like? And the lads were like, I dunno and I was like, ah, rain, I'm some funny and I jeers everybody. Ah uh, no, no, I don't know, because I am actually funny, so I don't need to say that to anyone else. I just know myself. I'm like, Oh yeah, I got him. I just go, oh, Yeah, I got him. Yeah, get him. Uh, I, I look as long as you can amuse yourself that's all you need and that's the important thing but um Eamon we're on Teespring and mm. we sell merch on there we have oh my uh, days. we now have the artwork merch we have uh the artwork is on what's it on it's on we have the the Led Zeppelin one which is like on everything and then we I have I don't think the, we're allowed to say the Led Zeppelin one I think we get in trouble if they know that we sort of rip them off we have the no, it's inspired. I've talked about yeah. this before. You know, uh, and then I have our original podcast artwork on some things as well. So do go and check that out. Uh, it's it's there to be had. It's up to you guys. And there is discount codes. There's discount codes for if you use Discord, and there's also discount codes for just in general. So do hit me up, and uh, I'll 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 hook you up with that. Twitter, we're on Monsterfuls Pod. Everywhere else is Monsterfuls Podcast. We are at Monsterfuls Podcast at gmail dot com for. Um, Interview requests, any of that type of shit. If you want to tell us stories, Eamon, stories. 
Mm-hmm. Please you like tell stories? Us stories. I just want to know about ghost stories. That's why Jenny's stuff lit me up. Like I thought that was awesome. His 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 ghoulie stories were awesome. His ghoulie stories. Well, that has different well, connotations. Like, go right? ghoulies, like ghouls, like not in, in, in Irish like, vernacular. Ghoulies, Sandy can mean... and Mickey. <laughs> 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 I don't want to know what you and Gianni do. Be PM, but he's going to go for some stuff. Gianni's getting stories. married. Leave him alone, will you? <laughs> mother of God. Right. So, and speaking of Gianni, shout out to all of our patrons. Mm. We we love all you guys. Uh, it's it's really awesome that you guys support us, and we do appreciate. Yeah, in these shitty abysmal times it is lovely to have a little bit of support and a little bit of extra financial income uh, to support like the entertainment I suppose that we're putting out is quite cool is it not Eamon? Mm. Ah yeah like I mean you know it's just I'm seeing the views come in and stuff like that like obviously we broke 10,000 listens or 10,000 downloads month ago. This, well a month ago yeah but technically yeah, yeah. today <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah no so that yeah that's really exciting it's really fun for us I suppose it's just for us trying to figure out how to make it grow, how to reach more people. So if you can help, obviously, you know, uh, understand not everyone uh, is in a position to, to join the Patreon or wants to join the Patreon. I totally understand that as well. Um, but yeah, if you could just give us, if you're enjoying the podcast, give us some good reviews, pass it to your friends, all that sort of good goodness. And um, yeah, that'll help us reach more people and hopefully just, you know, in an ideal world, Rob. Uh, what well, geez, I don't know if it is an ideal world now if I just talk to you for a living. No it is ideal, I mean, it? people people would pay money to talk to me for any type of... Like, I'm like a muse, people come and talk to me. Mm, you're you amusing, know? all right, I'll give you that, <laughs> you're amusing. Um, speaking <laughs> of, um, like, our Patreon and our t-shirts, we have the review contest, which is still mm. in effect, and it's probably coming up to the last week, about the time that you hear this, guys. And, um, yeah, so, write a review. Mm. on some, apple some cool ones so far that i'm that yeah i was uh, really enjoying um yes. again in my mind the final fantasy 7 this being the best final <laughs> fantasy 7 po- podcast uh, anyone's ever heard is is that's up there for me right now can you beat yeah. it try yeah so so write a review podcast addict apple podcast anywhere like that if you're on spotify guys just download podcast addict and use that for the purpose of the review send it on to us on any of our social media just send us a screenshot and i'll be sure to save it and keep it by so that i know who it is and the winner gets a lovely hoodie uh the color of their choice the size of their choice so it's a really cool little contest and it's just a way for us to give back to you guys as well a way of saying thanks for the support and uh, Eamon as our listeners have probably guessed by now we are going to the Czech Republic mm. uh, in this episode which is uh, which is a country that both of us have actually visited so we can mm. speak with a little together, bit together I believe yeah well together yes and also individually <laughs> yes. um, I believe we visited together through a liminal space a liminal and, space and then, yeah, and then separately as well. So, do you want to tell people a little bit about Huska Castle? I would. So, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, rendition of, of Monster Foes is about a haunted location. It's the first we've done since Loftus Hall, right? Indeed it is. I this mean, is yeah. like a haunted house story. Um, albeit this is a little bit different to, to Loftus Hall. Hmm. So... Castle Huska or Huska Castle, we'll probably use those two terms interchangeably. It's a Gothic castle situated about 50 uh, kilometers north of Prague in the Czech Republic. It's one of the best preserved settlements of that period. And, you know, that sounds pretty normal. Except... The Gothic period, wasn't it? That was like when the the Cure and all were making music, was it? Yeah, I think that was like... The end of the Gothic period was like Marilyn Manson, where Ah. they smells like children, I believe. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um... No, the Gothic period would have been, <laughs> I believe, the 1600s <laughs> or the 16th century. Um, uh, something like that. Uh, but yeah, so all this sounds pretty normal, except that according to Chechenian folklore, the castle, as opposed to being built to keep enemies out, which w- is what you would expect from mm. any kind of settlement, mm-hmm. this was actually built to keep something inside. Oh, so shit. So Huska Castle is... Like a madhouse, to- like... Kind of like a madhouse, except Mental home. the inmates are demonic and come from uh, some sort of weird portal and, right. and are demons, which okay. is terrifying. 
Yeah, that is terrifying. But basically, Husa Castle is thought to be one of several gates of hell. Uh, so similar to, I don't know if you ever watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I believe. Yes. Uh, uh, I think it was actually Buffy the Vampire Slayer that brought me into puberty. Um, yeah, and so Sarah Michelle Geller would bring you kicking and screaming into I puberty. I had a dream. That. No, it wasn't a wet dream. Oh. Um, it was dream. a dream. Yeah, it was a dream where I was just doing nice things with Sarah Michelle Geller. We mm. were having, we had a picnic <laughs> and we were holding hands and I was about probably 11 I think and I woke up and I was like oh yeah girls are deadly and that was it that was okay. that was literally how I, I came into puberty so just thought I'd share that with the world and you just had a nice date with Sarah Michelle Geller. yeah yeah that was it yeah uh, well I was like I'm, I'm a couple of years older than you so I think I was about 12 when that TV show when I first saw it I think um, yeah, 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 and at the That's time I was like a walking hormone. So between Sarah Michelle Geller and whoever plays Cordelia, I was just like Cornwallis. Fucking no, not my fake brother <laughs> Cornwallis. Cordelia um, ah, right. was grinding myself up on couches and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Cornwallis but was like, "Mom, Mom, Eamon's at her jibbing on the cu- on the couch again." Mom, Eamon won't give me back the Hoover. Mom says it's okay for me to clean my room with the door closed. Um, but uh, anyway, so yes. So as you might recall from, uh, if we're stepping away from the kind of walking hormone fucking high yes. testosterone teenage days of mm. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you remember that Sunnydale High School was actually uh, a, a hell mouth oh, as that's well. that's right. Yeah. yeah, so it was. Yeah, and that's and all, why all yeah, the vampires right, yeah. and the spooky stuff was going on. Yeah, so mm. there you are. Um, but... Before we start to move on to some of the more intricate details of uh, Castle Huska, let's take a quick look at what it is that it might be trying to shield the world from. So if you want to to tell the listeners, Rob, what what is a gate of hell? Well, there was a place in Wexford called St. Sennans and um, that now. tried to shield the world from plenty of wrongdoings as well. Come on, so come on, come let's, on. Let's try and Come figure on. out what is a gate of hell or a hell mouth. The gates of hell are various places on the surface of the world that have acquired a legendary reputation for being entrances to the underworld. Often they are found in regions of unusual geological activity, particularly volcanic areas or sometimes at lakes, caves or mountains. So sometimes I think these gates of hell are like um, Tierra del Fuego, uh, areas Fuego. that are naturally on fire or spooky. Mm. So, like, if you're a tribal or an old school dude and you see a volcano, you're naturally going to assume there is nothing good that comes from this place except burning and shit. Yeah, I mean, and they probably all have like that. high, high energy. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's energetic, yeah. there's feelings off certain places. Um, there's like, peace, like, mm. Jankum. Jankum is a big one. Uh, mm. For anyone who doesn't know, that's when you shit <laughs> into a glass jar and then put the the top, the lid of the jar on secure, screw it on securely, and leave it alone. Uh, how long is it, Rob? A couple of weeks, maybe two a weeks. Few yeah, you want a little ferment. Um, and so then, what you want to do is you want to having you know, it's probably going to be pretty raspy now. But if you take the unscrew the top and then just hoof it, so a hoof is like a. You know, breathe it in like that. Um, <laughs> what will happen is you will get high off the smell of your own shit. Uh, so that's that's an interesting one, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're con- contractually obliged to mention Jenkins as well as another mm. one that we that, yeah, that sort it's, of it's crept weird. Up on like us. T- to be honest with you, because I, I was very surprised that you know even with the Patreons that people wanted to give us like you know a few bits of money a month. But what surprised me most of all was that Square Enix wanted to give us money to mention Final Fantasy VII in every episode. That was, that was a big one. Um, the mm. other one was that Mickey's dot com wanted us to, to talk about sentient Mickey's wherever we could. Um, yeah. And now, yeah, I, I, the, I didn't Jenkum realize Jenkum Corporation. was our new... The Jenkum Corporation, yeah. <laughs> oh, like yeah. Umbrella. Jenkum Pharmaceuticals. Jenkum Pharmaceuticals. Building a better future. Side uh, effects that. include weeping <laughs> penis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jenkum is um is not what I mean is, you know, when you're by a volcano and you get all them gases and all that, it's like <laughs> you know, sulfur, Jenkum, it's all mixing up, you're kinda of going like Ooh. What um, is this? Yeah, and you're sort of seeing that makes you see demons. So that's perhaps mm. something that is uh is what happens, you know. So Maybe. basically what I'm saying, anywhere that's volcanic is evil and bold and then 
lakes, caves, and mountains, yeah, they can have mysterious aspects. Some, you know, sometimes you were in Iceland, I was in Iceland. We're like mm-hmm. fucking Magellan in this episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you see the geysers? The geyser. The power geyser. Which is did you uh, see? Did that's you see a the Terry Bogart special move in <laughs> Fatal Fury? Um, mm. Yes, I did see the geyser. Yeah, so that that kind of shows you um, mm. uh, that that at the time was probably viewed as something quite sinister because if you got into it, like, well, they were seen back in the day all this dead fish, dead birds, you know, that tried to fly into this. So they would have been like, mm. okay, this is a bit spooky as well. So yeah, anything with unusual geological activity, basically. Yeah. Um, we've discussed it previously, but. It would certainly encourage the links between places and natural energy having links to other entities or spiritual planes. Liminal places, trademark. Y- yes. So, for example, if you thought about Lords in France being a geographical region where healing can occur, or if you're off the fucking Medjugorje for the weekend, um, and where hundreds of people travel. I nearly went to Medjugorje last year, actually, for the laugh, because I was in the area and did the tours out to Medjugorje. I was like, Probably. hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, hundred people travel there every year, and they report miracles. So I suppose by the similar logic, you could say that like there's places with malignant energy. There's the mm. evil lords. Yeah, there's yeah. the unhappy Medjugorje. Um, and if you're not if you're not familiar with the name Medjugorje, try and spell it and send it to me, and you will not get it right. I mm. I, I promise you that. But uh, yeah, so I suppose. If lords in similar places had links to what Christians would define as heaven, um, then Castle Huska, by the same logic, has a strong link to hell, Eamon, perhaps? Mm, absolutely, yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's some other places as well in uh, our globe, our world, oh, yes, uh, our dangerous. earth, if you like. Our mm. planet is another word mm. for it, um, which are thought to have, uh, to, thought to be hell mouths or, or gates to hell. Uh, obviously, we talked about uh, Sunnydale, um High school uh, in mm-hmm. yeah, something there. This is a real place. Yeah, real place. Uh, in China, Fengdu has a long history in the Taoist tradition of being a portal to hell. Oh. Um, the Taoists are kind of cool. Have you ever heard of the Tao, the way? Yeah, yeah. Taoism and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some yeah, interesting yeah. stuff there. So if the Taoists believe in hell, then fucking so do I, man. Do- there's a, a gate of hell in Wexford as well that opens up, actually all around Ireland, it opens up at around 2am outside mm. Abracababra. Yeah, yeah, every Abracababra. That's why you'll see that some Abracababras have actually changed their name. So we have, yeah. is it Bob's Diner is where Abracababra Ray's used? Diner Ray's now. Diner. We have mm. Ray's Diner. Up here in Dublin, there was another one uh, just called The Diner. Um, <laughs> because what happened was there was too many day walkers yeah. coming out of nightclubs and just basically... Uh, transmoglifying themselves into into these, you know, vampiric entities uh, at about two and three in the morning. Yeah, so uh, with, we, with we did suffer fry. with them. Mm-hmm. We did, and I think there was one or two nights that I, mo- I may, may very well have become one. <laughs> uh, luckily, uh, you know, my father is a priest, and I was, <laughs> I was cured. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was going on in uh, Pennsylvania? What's the crack with there? Uh, Pennsylvania. My father told me he'd celebrate the head <laughs> off me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so in Helm Township near York in Pennsylvania, it's a subject of a modern urban legend claiming that it contains the seven gates of hell. And actually, oh, yeah. <clears throat> there is a podcast called Strange Familiars uh, right. and a dude called Timothy Renner who's written a couple of different books on this. Um, mm-hmm. I have one, I think it's called don't look behind you on Toad Road is the one I have. Now, that sounds like right. I'm making a joke, but that's actually it the does, name of it. Yeah, you just um, it there's another one called The Seven Gates of Hell, and he's just released a different book. Um, Jesus, about Bigfoot. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it's about the folklore of Bigfoot anyway. Is volume one, and the next one is, is uh, The Evidence is volume two. But in right. Pennsylvania, The Seven Gates of Hell, lots of stuff with orbs, will-o'-the-wisps, lights in the forest, um bigfoot encounters flannel men women in white loads of weird stuff tommy the pigeon David tommy Snell, the pigeons there Jim. yeah yeah um tommy pubes uh all the boys are there um <laughs> sorry you're tommy pubes isn't it or is, is your uncle <laughs> no it's my uncle but your sometimes uncle. i assume it's identity for yeah. the purpose of well, comedy yeah. that's the blood like yeah yeah <laughs> um <laughs> in derwees Turkmenistan, a burning natural gas fire in the middle of the Karakum Desert, is known as the Door to Hell or Darvaza. Oh, I thought it was like Darv- I thought that was a different language, so it's not oh. Dar- Darvaza Gas Crater. <laughs> um, yeah, I seen a, a video once of um, 
poor kids and this and this kind of uh, lens where I suppose to what I'm saying about you know like toxic lakes and things like that. Mm. Um, I seen these kids, man. I think it was in Afghanistan and they were fucking playing in like a an oil waste like dump like basically just it was like a swimming pool of oil but it was crude oil that they, it was dumped there like mm. and uh, it was like it was cursing le- and all like it was left it. <laughs> yeah, it was <clears throat> left over and apparently I was reading like the comments on it and people were saying like yeah they'll be dead in like a few hours after like excruciating pain oh, and God. Um, all the toxic stuff so it's that's what I mean by that is you know there was probably times in history <coughs> where kids were playing or even adults were playing and they, they got into the wrong water or the wrong area and they became sick and they might have died and yeah, I suppose yeah. that would have been a cautionary tale to them, yeah? Yeah, stay away from these places. There's mm. reasons, I'd say, for a lot of these, fa- you know, like, even when you think about forests that you're told to mm. stay out of, like, I think the Tikbalang we were talking about, you know, he guards yeah. the apple tree or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times, yeah, like, there's probably a lot of predators in forests in certain areas of the world, like wolves, bears, all that sort of stuff. So a lot of times folklore is just, it's cautionary tales um, that are linked to natural things that you should be wary of or, or kind of you know give some more extra respect to mm, mm, mm. so yeah sure. there is a there's another one uh, in hawaiian folklore um when we make it big i'm going to go on a holiday to hawaii and i'm going to swim with tiger sharks what do you think about that lovely enjoy it man have the time of your life love it mm, last yeah. time in my life because that shark's going to eat me raw oh, uh what? hawaiian folklore the waipio valley contains an entrance to the lower world or lua omilu which mm. is now concealed with sand. Right. Um, I was actually told as well out in Curaclo, there's a if you go out far enough, there's a there's a gate uh, in the water, and if you open right. it, you go to hell. The devil appears. Oh, lovely! Is that yeah. actually a thing, or are you just making that up on the spot? No, someone actually did say that to me years oh. ago. Uh, there's also a nudist beach out in Curaclo, so if you want to swim there? out that way and get caught by fucking, <laughs> if you want to swim out that way and see an old fucking wrinkled bollocks, um, yeah, well, there's like you know. What else would you be seeing on the beach? I might go out that way and see what the crack yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you where it is after the podcast. Anyway, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to blow up your spot. You know, we no, have ten no, thousand no. listens now, so we're big. Yeah. big shots. Big sh- <laughs> fucking <laughs> <laughs> maverick and goose man. Um, <clears throat> the last one then is Mount Osor in northern Japan, which is probably my favorite one all out of all of them. Uh, it's said to be an entrance to hell as well. So there you go. Yeah, interesting. So again, mountains, I suppose, volcanoes, forests, lakes, all that sort of shit. You know? the fucking mm. geography. We love that shit. But like in Ireland, we actually do have one, and it's not the uh, mental institution that I was making fun of. Yes, poorly, you really have to stop. Uh, in Ireland, St. Patrick's Purgatory is an ancient pilgrimage site on Station Island in Loch Darg, County Donegal, Ireland. According to legend, the site dates from the 5th century when Christ showed St. Patrick a cave, sometimes referred to as a pit or a well. On Station Island, that was said to be the entrance to Purgatory. Mm. Yeah. So, we've got a few things for Patreon that will happen at some point. This is, you know... We're, I think we've already said this anyway, but th- this will definitely be happening. We're going to find the Doraku. We're going to do a video series looking for the Doraku. That is going to happen. And we are going to go to Loch Darg, County Donegal, apparently, yeah. to find this, right? We can probably do both of those in the one day. Um, there's some people that uh, might argue that the whole county of Donegal itself is like purgatory. But uh, sure, look. That's <clears> gorgeous. <throat> but it's I've also. Never, I've never, yeah, I've never been there. I have been there. I haven't, but it's supposed to be good. <laughs> it's supposed to be um, class. The castle itself, I mean, uh, it was originally Ooh. constructed in the 13th century, uh, so it wasn't in it wasn't in like the 1980s, like I was thinking. No, it, no, it wasn't in the. So you were thinking Gothic music period? Yeah, uh, I was thinking around well, like your. They were thinking more Gothic that. medieval period. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was originally constructed back then, so between 1253 and 1278, during the reign of Ottokar II of Bohemia. The castle, which was built, it's actually younger than Loftus Hall, which is interesting. Mm. The, ca- the castle, which was built in the early Gothic style, is located about an hour north of Prague on the top of a steep rocky cliff in the Czech countryside. Czech countryside, by the way, fantastic stuff. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Seen it in Desi. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. Best countryside ever. At a glance, the castle seems relatively normal, perhaps using the cliff as a form of defence. However, on closer inspection, the castle, Eamon, 
has mm-hmm. no fortifications. Mm-hmm. Now, what is a castle without fortifications, Eamon? It's not it a castle. It is just a house. Yeah, big house. So, fucking miss me with that castle bullshit. Mm-hmm. Call it house, house. Huska, huska. Now, as we'll read on, we might uncover where the fortifications are actually mm-hmm. built. Right, and okay. That will, that will make you soil your pants, as <laughs> I did a few episodes ago. Weetabix in mm. the Undies or a jammy wagon wheel, depending on what type what you've ate that day. Mm. Um, but it has no fortifications, no water source, no kitchen, and for years after it was constructed, no occupants. Yeah. So this is a very spooky castle with a lot of weird shit going on. Yeah. Why Obviously, bother? Like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have no water source, no kitchen, I can kind of get the no water source sometimes. But if you have no kitchen, what are you doing? Sure, you can't um, eat. Yeah, exactly. So it makes it clear that Huska Huska was <laughs> not built as a protective sanctuary or a residence. The location of the castle is also quite unusual. It is situated in a remote area, sort of surrounded by thick forests. It's got swamps. It's got sand- sandstone mountains all around it. It's like something out of a fucking Minecraft map. Mm. Um, it's all the different biomes all around it. The location has no real strategic value, and it's not really situated near any sort of popular routes. The strangest thing about it is that the windows are actually fake. Now, this happens in uh, Irish villages. This is like a thing. I don't know whether it's a thing anywhere else in the world, but... Um, it's, it's it's quite sad actually. They paint on windows for a lot of the derelict houses in Ireland now, so it's like to kind oh, of really? make it. Yeah, yeah. There's a village <laughs> in Leash that uh, has <laughs> all painted Shocker. on. Shocker! A derelict uh, house in Leash. Shocker! Yeah, that. It has all fake windows, but there is actually places in Wexford town that have fake windows. You as fucking well. leave it out. No, there isn't. There's nowhere <laughs> there is, like that yeah. in Wexford. So Wexford's in Wexford, lovely. For, for all of us Irish uh, listening to the podcast, there is a place called Bride Street. And at the top of Bride Street, you will find two houses that have painted windows. But yeah, so they're merely just a pane of glass in this case with stone directly behind it. They're not painted on, like I'm saying. Um, they're effectively they're effectively inversions of what a window should be, I suppose you could mm. say. The Even the archer's loopholes face inwards. So... Yeah. It's the fucking lad building. It must have been having a right crack. But. Well, think about it. If the if the archer's loopholes are facing inwards, the strategic advantage, if you could call it an advantage, <laughs> would be that you would want to fire inside the castle. Yeah, so it's like, if you're wanting to just... Yeah, if you're... It's basically, if you're the hardest bastard around, you want to build a castle, sit in it, and basically tell all your archer mates, like, I come up around mm. here and I'm trying to fucking shoot me. You know, you, you don't twats I'm going to sit in the middle of this castle you just can try and get up into them loopholes and try and shoot me and we'll mm. see what happens yeah that could be one thing is that the person wanted to build the castle so that they could get their friends to fire arrows at, at them that, that's well, one theory it's a good that's, theory that was, that's what I thought yeah it's a good theory now the other theory is maybe they were trying to keep something else in the castle this ah. is possible um do you think it's more likely that some lad just wanted to try dodge arrows in his kitchen? Oh, sorry, there was no kitchen in his. Uh, no, there was no kitchen. He's just, he just sat in the in the living room <clears throat> screaming, "Shoot me, you daft cunts!" <laughs> and um, they will be uh, trying to fire arrows and stuff. It sounded like a fun time anyway. But why would you bother actually building a weird ass building aside from what I'm saying, Evan? Mean, well, because I know I know mine yeah. is the most plausible. No, it's definitely the most plausible. Why I mean, don't we, could we probably just end the episode here? We'll be like, <laughs> so that's Castle Huska, guys. Some mad fella. Uh, decided to get his mates to shoot arrows at him in his house with no kitchen and uh, did he survive we're not sure but we're going to look into it next week uh, Castle Huska part 2 uh, The Reckoning okay so um, alright so let's let's give ourselves a little MIB uh, silver mm. pen that erases our memory right okay. we're going to go in fresh uh, I, mm. I appreciate your moxie though Rob I appreciate your moxie according to folklore Castle Huska was constructed over a large hole in the ground. Oh. Okay? Large hole in the ground. Yeah. Now, it's fabled that the hole was so deep that no one could see the bottom of it. You're oh. mad! Yeah, uh, yeah. The legend is that demonic shimmers, chimeras. Ch- chimeras, I got it right, I got it, I got it right, I got it right, we said it at the same time. I always do this. Uh, <laughs> demonic chimeras, creatures neither fully human nor fully animal, 
would crawl up out of the pit at night and drag down any people that they could capture. Now this, just to get a, I suppose to get a mental image of this, if anybody has watched the the Castlevania uh, Netflix series, the cartoon, there's no, stuff like this happening. Them. The winged beasts come up and they take, what did you say? I said no I'm not sure. everybody watching shout out to Neve on the podcast who definitely watched it because we were having a chat about it well Neve rhymes with weeb and <laughs> that's all I'd say about that <sighs> winged hell beasts were also supposed to fly up <laughs> propelled by the pit's foul vapours to terrorise the local cattle and dis- destroy the crops Um uh, and now what I've done here, because I'm, I'm very clever. You know the way that I'm very clever, Robert? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I, I'm in awe of your cleverness, actually, uh, when we do episodes. Will you stop? There was one time when I was... Actually, do you know that when I was born, I actually drove myself out of the hospital? Oh, yeah. Well, it was like... Um, <laughs> it, was like it was like that uh, child member that was born and threw her mag against the wall and ran through the walls like the uh, cool lead man that we were talking about. In that oh, episode. yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that kid yeah. from our uh, mini fuzz. The title I've put on the next one is Down in a Hole, Losing My Soul. And for any Alice in Chains fans there, that's from the song that's also mm-hmm. called uh, Down in a Hole. There are literally dozens of us. There's dozens of us. Uh, it also doesn't make me sound as clever when I say it out loud. Uh, Rob, why don't, you, why, don't you, why don't you tell the listeners about that one? Yeah, so the local authorities before the castle was built wanted to find out what was in the pit and where it led to, as you do. Mm-hmm. I mean, you find the pit, you want to find out what's going mm-hmm. on. It's like that creepy pasta about the two guys in the, the gold cave. Do you remember that one? Oh, Emma? yeah, and they found that, all the Egyptian I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to read that on here, maybe, but it's a long... Long oh, dude, thing. that's like three episodes or something. Yeah. Maybe sometime in the future it'll be like a special audio book. I, I would <laughs> like to do, what do you think about it? Uh, and people get in touch with this and, and tell us what you think. I'd like to do some sort of Halloween episode in October because obviously, yes. you know, we're only two months out. And um, maybe read some, some spooky stories out for the listeners, a special yeah. Halloween episode. Creepy pasta or something. Mm, I, I'll write one. I'll write one. Yeah. What'll I write it about, Rob? Uh, something about me being cool and okay, also being cool. spooky things as well. Like you can do me like sort of fighting me being with axes. cool and spooky things as well. <laughs> so that is literally what I'm going to go. I'm going to start writing it from tomorrow. Uh, I'm probably just going to quit my job tomorrow and say, "Listen, uh, I uh, <laughs> my calling has come. I need to write about Rob being cool and spooky things happening." So we, we have 15 patrons, so it's time to pack it up. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready to tell my boss to go fuck himself. Like I'm ready. Yeah. I'm like. Oh yeah, you want me to you want me to run that report? <laughs> How about this, son? How about this? I'm making a smooth twenty five euro well, a week split well, with could, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing that um, if you write a book about me being cold, there will be plenty of people that'll be interested in that. Mm. So I, I do think that that's a good one to mm. write about. You being cool, the most fictitious fiction ever fictioned. <laughs> Me arse, no. Me arse. Uh, it, it'll be easier right to self, really, to be yeah. honest with what you. What would the first thing you think? You'll think a ghost has possessed your fucking pen, your hands would be moving I know, it'd be like, like automatic writing, it'd be like using yeah, yeah. a Ouija board or something. I'm just thinking, yeah. like, the first paragraph. It'd be like, Isn't there a show called Ghost Writers where a ghost wrote, but it was also a mm. ghost writer? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna, well, your, your one, your, the first paragraph you use is gonna be like, the sun hung low in the October oh. sky. Yeah. Rob took a drag on his cigarette. Right, I like that. Yeah, I yeah you like smoking. that? You're back smoking, yeah. yeah. Took a yeah. sip of his whiskey. Oh, spat like the remainder thing. into the floor. Hmm? His girlfriend came up and said, Rob, come back to bed. And he said, quiet, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds That's true. like, because you're a tough guy. You're like, he All took right. another drag off his cigarette. He took his gun out of the holster. Oh. Putting in his mouth. Saying, God... <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so just, just, just you know, I was like, "Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you depth." Uh, oh. Just then, the phone rang. He picked it up. <sighs> Billington mercenary. <laughs> <laughs> Billington mercenaries. Robert, oh. what weird things are happening down in the chapel? C- come down, and take a look for us, please. Right. Uh, us. He put right. the gun. He set the gun beside him on the bedside locker. Turned to his girlfriend and said, "When I get back here, you better not be here. Oh, I'm going solo." Mm. He slammed the door. 
turned the key in his Harley engine, mm, felt the power like between his legs. Yeah, give me a stiffy. <laughs> <laughs> Drove away. To me, like stuff like that, you know, like said, like crazy. yeah, moody, yeah, moody, moody gray, crazy. kind of like the first Max Payne game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got a little bit of supernatural madness with a bit of hard hitting mm. reality. You're on a lot of painkillers in it. Yeah, yeah, right. give me a lot of fucking oxyhantons or something. I go around like a lunatic. That Ooh. sounds good, actually. So, yeah, that's Halloween special. I'll be special, writing that folks. for Halloween, right? Write that for the Halloween special. Yeah, Halloween special. Mm-hmm. And also, we'll do uh, a Halloween. We'll we'll do a uh, Samhain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about Talk about as the Irish, a Halloween yeah, special. Yeah. Or sure. as my American friend calls it, Sam Hain. Sam Hain, yeah. So, what was the crack with the prisoners, I mean, What was the crack with uh, the hole here? Where, oh, where were we? Down out? in a hole, losing my soul. Yes, this, this oh, what happens so. when we start drinking fucking whiskey on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, we get lost. Oh, mm. oh hang on, I've got it. I've got it. You got it. it. Yeah. So the local authorities before the castle was built, we're going back here a little bit, but mm-hmm. they wanted to find out what was in the pit and where it led to. So prisoners were given a choice. This is where it gets interesting. Gets they were given really a choice of serving their sentence of bleak confinement and torture, which sounds great laugh, or being lowered on a rope to explore the pit and report back. So that's kind of... I mean, which would you take, Eamon? Uh, I'd, probably, or... I'd probably go with the pit, to be honest. Yes, Unless same, same. now, this prisoner that we're about to talk about, if I'd mm. seen him going before me, I might be like, do you know what, lads? The old torture, I think I'll take the torture. And I don't know if you remember, but Prague have a torture museum where they, they showed do, all the indeed. fucked up ways. Uh, yes, Dude, I that, that, that torture museum is fucked up as well. Like, like they oh. were doing some really sadistic shit. Yeah, male chastity belts was on the things that I kind of remember. From do you remember there. the one where they put, like, they they, uh, they have, like, a, a log, basically, a vertical log, and they, they saw the shit out of the top of it, so it's, it's a spike. It's like Vlad the Impaler shit, like, and then yeah. they just put it in your ass, and then it it eventually yeah. just like cuts you into. Yeah, I remember from that. the ass up. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The ass splitting device. Yeah, he basically yeah, I, I just go into of, the hole. I go into the hole. Fuck that. It's basically a point that's not so sharp that it like pierces you, but rather I think gradually over time and over time it slowly, slowly penetrates you. And just gravity basically does the torture. Mm. Um, and it is fairly grim. There's a lot. Good show for people. I don't know if it's even still there. But in, in Prague, there's a torture museum and also uh, a communist museum, which I really enjoyed. That was very yeah, good. I didn't see the communist museum. I saw the torture museum. I saw the sex museum. Uh, the sex museum was weird. Um, right. I think I was probably there too. I was in the, yeah. the, the regular museum there, like the, yeah. the city that's pretty good as well. A lot of weird stuff shit in oh, that. Oh, actually, so. I saw the Ghost Museum, like the Haunted Prague Museum with the Gollum okay. and all their folklore cool. and stuff. That was really, like, it definitely looks like something that, like, a family have just put together. Um, right. But it was really interesting. Really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, yeah, yeah. So check out all that, guys. Prague is, a, by the way, a fantastic yeah, beautiful place to place. visit. Uh, yeah, amazing. So... One prisoner did actually accept this challenge of being lowered into the pit and after a few moments below the surface began to scream in fright. So when he was pulled back up he was babbling, babbling incoherently. He seemed to age decades in just a few moments. His hair had turned white and his eyes had a crazed look. He never regained the senses and died soon after of unknown causes. Mm. So after that prisoners chose a life of torture instead of a trip down the smoking pit. Um... So you could you could argue like maybe just to speculate her on the pit, you know, because it does sound a bit fantastical that that happened to that dude. Mm. But I'm wondering, is there some type of gnarly chemicals down there that would essentially, you know, fuck you up that way? Yeah, I mean, there could be. It's just um, like Prague is a pretty spooky place anyway. Like if you go yeah, through yeah. like the Charles Bridge, they have yes. loads of ghost stories like that little yeah. baby that's on the Charles Bridge. They mm. like that you know floats around the place looking for its ma or whatever. They've mm. got the the fucking the nun that was killed. They have I think the golem, the the mm. stone monster that uh, some mm. sorcerer created from Prague. They have loads and loads and loads of ghosty stuff going on there. And if you see the city, it's a very spooky ghosty city as well. Like it's a yeah. beautiful place, but it's definitely like it wouldn't surprise Moody. you if you saw a ghost there, you know. Yeah, it's moody. It'd be a good place to get your creative juices flowing. Mm. It's a, it's a, there's a, a vibe to it. Yeah, um, good city. But the good king Wenceslas, uh, the first, that was really he, impressive. Yeah, yeah, he, he was the really good well, king. Yeah. Wenceslas. He was the good wow. king Wenceslas. Do you never hear of good king Wenceslas? No, uh, Wenceslas the first. I've 
It's a, it's a, it's like a, a song. Good no, King, I haven't. Wenceslas. Really, yeah. It's, well. an, it's an English one, so that's probably why you don't know it. Mm. Um, hearing of the affair, he ordered the foul pit to be covered over with the chapel. And that is the last that was seen of the demons. But for centuries, people claimed they could still be heard, yowling at night mm. under the stone floor. Yeah! Like that. That was actually an MP3 that we procured for the podcast, wasn't it? Uh, it can be. Uh, I just did it. Yeah, there, it was. Yeah. yeah, no, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah that no, was I actually. Yeah, it. It that was, was actually. Was when you remember when we went together? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We recorded that when we went to visit Castle Huska together. Right. Yeah. 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 I remember. Um. So, what about the Thirty Years' War, I and mean, What the fuck was going on then? Yeah. So during the Thirty Years' War in the early part of the sixteen hundreds. So this, I believe, the Thirty Years' War is the war between the Huguenots and the Catholics. The basically mm. Protestant, the, the French um, Catholic Protestant, they were called the Huguenots back then. Mm. Massive war, basically. Um, mm. A Swedish officer named Aranto lived there and he practiced the diggity diggity dark arts, hoping right. to achieve immortality. And now, would you believe that his experiments involved a black hen? And this will be important later. So, mm. it's reported that sometimes. Uh, when battles were were happening, you know, Thirty Years' War, all that, when arrows were fired, they actually bent around him, refusing to strike him. So, so just like I was saying, Mm. that's so that's why he built the castle then. Yeah, yeah. People just fire arrows at him. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually (laughs) scary now how that's come back. Uh, So yeah, so there you go, Oranto. Uh, So how was he shot then? So eventually, he was right. shot through a window by local oh, hunters. Oh, but through through one of his windows. You know? Now I think this is when it was just a chapel before they made the, oh, the inward okay. facing. But mm. do you know what? I will, I will concede. Mm. I will say fair play, Robert. Mm. <laughs> in in a dramatic turn of events, <laughs> as you said at the start of the podcast, has indeed come back <laughs> in some shape or form. The odds uh, are clearly ever in your favour. Um, <laughs> so basically, yeah, he got too cocky. He was shot through the window uh, by some local hunters mm. because his activities had caused some suspicion in the area uh, and the evading Swedish army was not very popular anyway. So right. it's said that even after getting shot in the head, he it's survived right. for a short right. period of time and he called out for his black hen. Uh, oh, because oh, this was fella. where he did all the all the dark arts, so mm. would have been able maybe to to heal him. Um, allegedly, his ghost is supposed to still haunt the castle as well. So he only wanted his mystical rooster. And yeah. Was... Now, and we have two Alice in Chains. You've got rooster, and you've got down in a hole. So this is actually Castle Huska is the Alice in Chains castle episode. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, so. This is the Alice in Chains castle episode, I suppose. Um, the interesting thing about it is there's with Huska I suppose there's a few different legends that are attached to it and one of the other legends is um, around the time of the Third Years War as we previous, previously mentioned during the period when Castle Huska stood empty it was chosen by a Swe- Swedish rogue of is that Aranto is that the same fellow that we were talking about earlier yeah, yeah 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 so there's not there's a second one here that this I was meant sec- to this, this, this elaborates on the first one yeah yeah there, there's a, a, a little bit more uh, onto it but there's another tale here about um, a few hundred years later which was in 1836 so during a walking tour of the region a Czech poet Karl Heineck Macha or Macha spent the night at Huska and supposedly in his dreams he was visited by a terrible vision which he later recounted in a letter to his friend Edward Hindle Macha described his soul descending into the pit and then being transported into a hellish mechanized future of Prague in 2006. Oh my which, gosh. As it happens, both of us were in Prague around 2006. Yeah, I mean, we certainly yeah, were. It was like, and I'm not actually talking shite here. No, that's we, actually, yeah, we, we, we were both. Yeah. yeah, I think you were probably there, what, 2005, 2004? Uh, I think I was there. No, around it was 2006 because I had graduated college. Yeah, yeah, so 2006, yeah. yeah. 
I was there in 2007, I think. So he wandered around <clears throat> Prague at that time in horror yeah. and despair. Probably just because he saw the two of us and the, the, yeah. the future. Like someday they're going to make a podcast about this place and get all the facts <laughs> wrong and fuck it up beyond repair. <laughs> To be fair, I nearly got ran over in Prague in 2007, so maybe it is a, mecha- a mechanized terror. Um, but among some of the other unnerving experiences in the vision, Maka wrote that he met a girl who showed him moving pictures in a small casket, and that in darkness he walked among high sandstone cliffs riddled with holes that projected an eerie yellow light, uncannily similar to modern Sidley's day. I don't know what that means. Yep. The enormous blocks of flats which in the present day loom above the outskirts of Prague. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. So you could say that these moving pictures that were shown was maybe a phone, Eamon? Yeah, Maybe the possible. girl had a phone. It was maybe 2006. There's that. There's the moving pictures um, on a small casket. Yeah, I would imagine that's a phone, yeah. In a small pas- casket. So she was in the casket showing them this stuff. Um, hmm. Apparently. Maybe so maybe that, she- I'm trying to think. Maybe he it was a cinema and he felt like it was a casket. Maybe. Or maybe, maybe it was but just, yeah. if it's two thousand and six and we're talking about a vision of the future, uh, you know, it could very well be a phone, I suppose. Mm. Um, yeah, that'll make sense. And remember, Maka Macha was recounting all of this in eighteen thirty six. So how did these visions of the future emerge from his subconscious? Was it really only a dream? Or is it possible that he was actually transported ahead in time? There are those who believe so. Mm. I mean, I'm so, fucking one of them. Yeah, 1836 is a, a long ass time ago. I mm. believe is that's the scientific measurement of that I believe it's, of time. Yeah, an LAT, long ass time ago. Yeah. Long ass time, yeah. So it's uh, over 200 years ago. So you, you would, yeah, it's a it's a fairly good prediction. Yeah, he's got something that sounds like the mentioning of a phone, which is very interesting. He's got stuff talking about a mechanized prag. And I mean, 1836, if you put someone from that time now, they would absolutely lose their mind. My granny actually often says, if only my granny was alive to see what's going on now, uh, she'd probably just like drop dead of the difference. Like, because her granny would have lived in a, a very rural Irish setting. And, like, compared to what we're in now, where we have phones, we have TV, we have, like, rampant electricity Mm. everywhere, all that type of stuff. So, you know, 1836, you know, as we say, it might be like, oh, 1836, yeah, that was a while ago. But 1836 was a fucking long-ass time ago when most of our uh, modern inventions have happened. Yeah, most places didn't have electricity in 1836. Yeah, Do you know man. what I mean? Like, like so, yeah. think about a phone where you can watch your Netflix stream like that. Yeah, yeah. how could you even think of that? You know, yeah, and, uh, and even even watching programs at that time. Yeah, yeah. what that would make no like, sense. Yeah, but what? Do, you, do you know what, Rob? The only thing, the only thing that would make this even more fucking nerve wracking is if right. we introduced the Nazis. Oh well, sure. Look, Best they'll believe. always make everything more unnerving. You know the way. They so, are. don't you want to tell us about the? Uh, oh, I'll Nazis. tell you all about the Nazis and Huska. So, <laughs> <clears throat> during World War Two, the castle fell into the hands of the occupying Nazis, and records concerning it from 1938 to 1945 were destroyed at the end of the war, perhaps as a cover-up. Mm. Local people say it was used by the SS for the Leb- Liebensborn project to create the master race. So, I actually did a bit of reading into Liebensborn today. Fucked up, man. Crazy. Is This is the angel of death and all that sort of uh, mad stuff no, that he was doing? Or? No, no. Liebensborn was um, <clears throat> the Nazi program to basically ensure that there was Aryan... Um, Aryan wives, uh, people to breed, basically to create the master race. So they had loads of comp. They had like, it was actually in some ways uh, really weird. Like even saying this, but in some ways it was quite progressive at the time. The Nazis actually uh, had abortion um, at the time, which would have been fairly unusual. Mm. Uh, They they had protection for unmarried mothers. Okay, but it was less about. The protection of the unmarried mother more than it was if this mother met the criteria of what the Aryans or what the Nazi party deemed an Aryan to be, then they were basically entitled to go to this big building where they would be able to have as many kids as they like 
and have kids private as a single mother. And okay. there was also competitions in these places to have as many children as they could. Jesus, right. Okay. Like, they were, that was encouraged. Incentivizing and, pregnancy, like. Yeah, yeah. And, and many of these girls then would go on to be married to different SS officers and things okay, like that. So, right. basically, it was about um, making the Aryan race thrive. Right, I get you, I yeah. get you. So, yeah. basically... A bit of eugenics. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. So... Yeah. There, there are some who have said that the Nazis used Huska Castle as a magical artifact depository of sorts as well, mm. um, which is pretty interesting. So they were said to have conducted unknown experiments there, perhaps uh, trying to make the Spear of Destiny lead people towards immortality mm. or, or something like that. The, the reality is no one knows for sure. Now, there are accounts of that sort of occult Nazi stuff uh, certainly the spear of destiny comes up Hitler was mad on trying to get that the spear that pierced Christ's side uh, yeah apparently fiction yeah yeah I was reading into this um, supposedly anyway I think there's a lot of hot takes on on, on Hitler's sort of hot interest take. with with yeah with this side of things what a lot of people seem to reckon is that Hitler's fascination with the supernatural or wanting to procure things like the spear of destiny and procure all this other religious iconography was basically to establish nazi germany as like modern day rome so okay. basically we have all these artifacts we have all of this like history the nazi party owns this history and you know we're protectors of this history i suppose you could say so it was just a way to say like oh yeah sure we're sound like we have all mm. this stuff like we'll, we'll you know we've got all the cultural iconography that 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 you would ever want or need um we we have our hands on it but i think there's more to it than that that's like the very simplified view of it was that like oh hitler was never really into this stuff it was more so he just wanted it like i was saying as as a way to sort of bragging rights i, I, yeah, I suppose yeah, you could say yeah, gotcha. you know yeah, no, I mean, it, it definitely makes sense. Um, mm. And I suppose that kind of megalo, megalomaniacal mm-hmm. attitude would want those sort of artifacts as well. Mm-hmm. That kind of makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. So the only thing they do know for sure is that in the grounds, there's three Nazi soldiers that were buried on the grounds. Very interesting. Yeah. So that's 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 def- you know that's definite. Now, mm-hmm. I was wondering, is it possible that the likes of uh, Joseph Mengele, the Nazi angel of death, ever carried out some of his human experiments there. So, yeah. I don't know if you ever heard of the stuff that he used to do with twins, oh, and yeah, inflicting man. pain on, like, the really fucked up stuff that he did. Mengele, for those uninitiated, was basically, yeah, known as the Nazi party angel of death. He was the, the sort of leading doctor, I suppose you could say, in the concentration camps. So, as you can imagine, in concentration camps, the Nazi party viewed anyone that was in them as basically animals. There was there was no sort of human, there was no humanistic element put on these people. They were treated as horribly as you could ever imagine, like they didn't have a soul or anything. But yeah, the angel of death, like you were saying, did things with twins. He used mm. to, he'd inject one twin with poison to see if the other twin felt it. And then when the other twin died, he'd just kill the other one and yeah, use both yeah. of the bodies for autopsy. He'd inject eyeballs with chemicals to see if yeah. they changed color. If they didn't change color, he'd just pull the eyes out of the sockets and send them off mm. for study. Very strange. Um, Apparently he could be very sweet to the children at times and bring them sweets and stuff like that. And then the next day, just shoot them and kill them. And that'd be that, you know? Mengele, if we, if this was called History Fuzz, we would absolutely be doing a series mm. on him. Um, he he um, another one of the things he used to do was like live autopsies, where he would basically um, cut your heart out while you were alive, yeah, and yeah. things like that. Take your liver out while you were alive, just to see what happened. Um, and 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 the the Japanese wrote a lot of this stuff at the time as well. And as it happens as grim and horrible and disgusting as it is, most of that stuff was actually what spurned on a lot of modern medicine. It was mm. like, because they were able to basically just wantonly experiment on people, they were able to find out a lot of medical knowledge as well at the time. So it's it's quite a But you can't make it up that, you know, you would think Mengele, he was one of the most evil Nazis that there were. Yeah. He yeah. managed to escape and live until the 70s. Yeah. And I'm not joking you. He was living in South America and his name in South America was Jose Mengele. Ah, so, Jesus. 
Yeah, so he he was at plenty of stuff. It's actually a really interesting story if you want to read into his life. Uh, it involves Jewish Nazi hunters, um, false identities, him switching countries, him having a separate life. He went on to be like a door-to-door salesman. He went on to perform abortions in Argentina. Oh. Um, can you imagine getting a fucking abortion a off this country? abortion. You'd nearly pay more for it. <laughs> <laughs> I sure, and funnily enough, a girl actually died from a Mengele abortion. Uh, I'm going to say yeah, funnily enough. Surprising. I mean, not very not funny, funnily but at also, all. Yeah. yeah, but so he was he was acting the fucking horse until 1976. Is the Mossad and the Israelis insisted he was still alive even after 76? They didn't believe it, <clears throat> and there was you know bodies were exhumed. You could make a great Netflix show about this. You could make a great TV show about the whole hunt in Mengele. Mm. He lived. He lived all over the fucking shop, man. It was a really uh, interesting story. Yeah, I mean, you um, could make the argument that he was almost like the Rasputin of World War Two. You know, he was yeah. the weird dude that was like into the occult and trying all these this weird sort of bio mysticism type stuff to see what would take and what wouldn't. Very strange character. Very strange. Very evil character as well. Yeah, it was just it. It was like in a way having like a kid having like total scientific power mm. and just being able to uh, like some of the things that he did. When you read it, you're just like, "This it's is disgusting." Mad. Yeah. It's psychopathic yeah. kind of power, is you know what I mean? It's like there was no empathy, there was no regard for human life. Yeah, because there were just numbers, and and yeah. I suppose in, in Nazi Germany that they, they were thought to think like that about yeah. other yeah. races. So, but I'd say Mengele, like, because you hear like there's a lot of stuff you hear about Nazi Germany where like. There's some cases you hear where some Jewish inmates were mm. really awful to other Jewish inmates and kind of mm. working with the Nazis. And that, mm. to me, would point to someone who was sort of, you know, didn't have enough empathy to 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 be decent. And then in mm. other cases, you have uh, Nazis who were actually very kind to the, to the Jews in whatever capacity mm. they could be. You know, that would <clears throat> try to give them extra food or they mm. would hide them away if there, you know, if there was danger. Um, so I suppose it goes on both sides, you know, there's, I'm sure there was people in those concentration camps on the Nazi side that didn't want to be there or could see it was wrong. Mm. But I mean, what can you, like, there was a story recently, there's a dude in his nineties that was sentenced. I think it was a two year, like suspended sentence or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Cause he guarded a gate in Nazi Germany. Yeah. yeah. And look, I'm not saying it was the right thing to do to guard a gate. It obviously isn't, but he would have been shot if he had refused to do it. Do you know what I mean? It's a mention, very, it's yeah, a very tricky right. time. Like a very, yeah, you can't yeah, put regular morals no, against something like no, that. It's very you can't, tricky. You can't. So, I mean, look at the time. Germany was a fucking country, and mm. for so many young people going into the military would have just been a career. Most of them were not aware of what was going on in Auschwitz or any shit like yeah, that. Yeah, Most yeah. of them were unaware of it. We are able to look at it through you know historical glasses and we can see everything that was happening obviously in a country where most people are brainwashed at the time um you can't really try them under the, under those circumstances it's now it's especially a 17 year old who yeah if you know you're talking I mean? about the grim lads now you absolutely yeah, can. yeah but if course. you're talking about a fella that's just fucking doing a job um then it's a bit different, but I I don't think Mangala he might have been there, but it's kind of I think if a place had no running water, I don't know whether medical people would be there and, and you know that kind of thing. Mm, well, uh, I'd say I, they probably plumbed it and did all the because this is like I I know when it was yeah. originally constructed, you know, it probably didn't have it, but I'd say yeah, I I I'd imagine maybe. They, they did all the stuff to it. Maybe because well, the Palace of Versailles still has no plumbing or anything like that, you know. Mm, so yeah, like maybe. You wouldn't, may, maybe like it's hard to know, you know. I suppose to be fair sanitary issues didn't really seem to be top of Mengele's <laughs> list either, you know, so. No, well, um, true. But I mean, the, the, the castle did sort of go on to fall into disrepair in the communist era. Mm. Um, mm. Because I think Stalin, did he, Prague became under the, yeah, the Czech yeah. Republic. Yeah, 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 of course, before That's it was so the, the Czech Republic. The Purple Revolution. The yeah. yeah, the Purple Revolution was like other Russians <clears> over there. Um, so yes, it, the castle falls in disrepair during the communist era, um, and it's it's actually used for storage and also as a kind of a bleak sanatorium. So I can only imagine, you know, being put into a mental uh, asylum, and it's somewhere like Huska. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, it's bad, bad vibes. Um, bad juju for sure, especially if you knew juju. the folklore before you went there. You know? Yeah, absolutely. But um, what what do you think about the present day? 
Yeah, so the present day at the minute, the castle's been used by people for meetings on UFOs and things like that. Mm. So UFO enthusiasts will hang out there and, again, weirdos and the paranormal yeah. and esoteric arts like us. Dudes like you and me and the people on the Patreon, would, yeah. Yeah, we would absolutely hang out in Huska. And, again, it is conceivable sometime in the future that maybe we would like to visit places like that. So mm. that, that might be something. Oh, no, I think definitely that, if we can get some coin together... Uh, we should go off to Huska and do like a little documentary, you know. Yeah, I think that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll cut our teeth in Ireland and then mm. um, we'll find shoot the door to, and then once we've yeah. once we've mm-hmm. received all the accolades for that, we can go to Huska and uh, solve solve the the issue of the fucking gateway to hell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Huska in the Czech language actually just means a braided bread roll. So unlike what I was saying, where Huska means house, it doesn't. It's Huska is a braided bread roll. Mm. So um, why that is the castle's name, no one really knows. But a stone sculpture of such a roll is on the banister of one of the staircases. Maybe it's a chicken or the egg thing where maybe the bread was put there first and they went, okay, who's got someone that just seen it started calling it who's mm. got based on that. Or maybe it was intended to be some type of stone mill, perhaps. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's some sort of a masonry sigil as well. You know, maybe yeah, the braid of no. bread is actually like, it's this is the house of whoever or a sort of an esoteric kind of a thing where you don't know, um, you know, you and me don't know what it means, but maybe there's some guys who are involved in some sort of uh, crazy Illuminati type stuff and when they see the braided bread they're like oh I get it I know what this is blah, blah, yeah blah. it could be yeah you might be right yeah it might be just like a, mm. an in symbology type of thing you yeah know? yeah but that um, like that's that's kind of unfortunately we don't have any other real strong stuff about Huska do you know what I mean like we we that's sort of the gist of it is like it's meant to be a gateway to hell it's meant to be a portal to to the unknown that we obviously we we've been talking about it we have a uh, guys who went down there the hair went white like your man in fucking mm-hmm. it remember he gets he sees the <laughs> dude getting pulled into the sewer pipe or whatever and his hair goes white so there's all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff really interesting place we have the angel of death there uh joseph mengele like we, some mm-hmm. really strange stuff but the next part we decided to put in was to for anyone who doesn't know to give you a couple of ideas about how Prague itself is a pretty haunted place. So if you were to mm. pick a place out of the the sky and just sort of say, all right, where's likely to be a gateway to hell? I mean, Prague is up there in terms of <laughs> the rice because like it's a really like haunted kind of city. Its folklore is big with with ghosts and spooky things. Um, yeah. It's more spooky than Dublin, anyway, that's for sure. Well, I think the most spooky thing about Dublin are the actual people that live there. <laughs> but um, the daywalkers. But the... So, to give you an idea, we, we've just run down a couple of, you know, ghouls from Prague to give you an idea. <laughs> um, the first one is the Golem of Prague. Right. So, Judah Loe Ben Bezalel, the late 16th century rabbi of Prague, also known as the Maharal, reportedly created a golem out of clay from the banks of the Vlatava River and brought it to life through rituals and Hebrew incantations to defend the Prague ghetto from anti-Semitic attacks. So, super Jew golem, I'm on board with that. Yeah, and I mean, this, the golem, that comes up a lot. It's it's someone using dark magic to basically uh, breathe life into a, into a, what would you say, a clay creation, I suppose? Well, I, I've made lots of clay creations, and right now I'm actually looking at one of my dragons, one of my, one of my xenomorphs, my baby Yoda, and a Gengar key ring are all in front of me. So if that is true, then I'm waiting for them to come alive at any minute yeah. now. Well, my, I'm my, kind of worried. My microphone is made out of clay, and uh, I, oh. use, I use vines put ah, into yes, the bottom yes. of it that are wrapped around... Uh, and I'm just you got actually, them primitive technology mm, lads to make it for you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm tapping yeah. into. I'm using two lemons to power uh, the <laughs> recording equipment at the moment. Um, All right. And I have a wind turbine behind me. It's really just me, young fella uh, Zebedee <laughs> running around in a in an old Zebedee. hamster wheel, and you know he's happy enough. He's a good young lad. Oh, ah, well, sure, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, he's he's probably like crushing wheat and chaff at the same time as he is generating electricity. I'll tell you so. one thing: he'd crush any man for the love of God. The muscles on him. All right, yeah, we're sure, you know, running on the little hamster oh, wheel there to get you started. Cardio, yeah. it's, 
So he's got legs on him like a horse now, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got a Super Jew golem. One of the other things that we have is the Headless Templar, which is spooky. Oh. A Templar knight was beheaded around the time his church was closed and the Templars disbanded. For centuries, he has been seen on Friday at midnight riding down Leova Street with his head under his arm. So yeah, you're thinking of Sleepy Hollow, mm. all that shit. His phantom horse breathing smoke through its nose. Both the horse and rider wore the insignia of the Templars, a distinctive cross on the black and white cloth draped over the armour. When the bell struck one, he and the horse will just fuck off and simply vanish. And See ya. When the clock turns one in that cool ass astrological clock in Prague, which yeah, is another thing, it's that awesome, you isn't it? Uh, visit Eamon. There's a nun that's been murdered. Why don't you tell us? And she about is her? having none of it. Oh, okay. Uh, the murdered nun around the area of Saint Agnes Covenant in Yosefov, there lurks mm. a ghost that is known as the murdered nun. She appears only at night. She is known to be moody. Mm. and is seen sometimes covered in blood and crying hysterically. She is known also to smile and stare at loving couples uh, from a bench nearby. That is quite nice. So, as the story goes, she was the child of a wealthy nobleman. nobleman. She fell hopelessly in love with a desolate knight. Could it be our headless knight? Mm, Possibly, yeah. Uh, Her noble father refused to give his consent for marriage, and as the payment for her unforgivable sin, because I assume she was banging outside of marriage, mm-hmm. she was uh, she was sent to live in Saint Agnes Covenant, convent rather, uh, right. where she still resides today, but only in an esoteric form. Right, um, and what does esoteric mean? Esoteric is like a. It's. I don't think esoteric is the right word there. I think it should be like ephemeral or something. Esoteric is like the thing that is known by few. Yeah. Something that is known by few. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, intended for or likely to be understood by only a small number of people. Mm. But that's, yeah, probably ephemeral is probably the right word. Yeah, I'd word. say ephemeral we could go with there. Ephemeral. And uh, ephemeral. Monsterful's uh, Trivia, Ephemera was a band that Eamon used to be in when he was a very little small mm. um, Baba Fuzz. A powerful band. Uh, we took We took four bands in the town of Wexford that were very popular <laughs> and merged them into one. And... Uh, it's Wexford Supergroup. Yeah, Wexford Supergroup. The town was never the same. The town was <laughs> never the same. The night before her transfer to the convent, she decided to follow her heart and meet with her beloved. Her father went absolutely bananas and stabbed her repeatedly for shaming the family name. So As you do. Pretty traumatic end there for uh, Much like the Lady sister. Anne from Loftus. Yeah, yeah, quite similar. Quite similar. Yeah, the, the poor woman, and also she ties into a haunted story too. So, mm-hmm. um, very interesting. That again, the theme, the common theme. Again, we talked in the mini fuzz a few weeks back of the haunting and the stabbing and all this type of stuff. It all seems to end with like tragedy, um, and that breeds ghosts. Mm-hmm. But um, it, uh, who's the what did you think of it, Eamon? And what's what's your um, crack with it? I mean, there should be more. It's hard to get more information on the whole. It's actually hard to get even pictures of the whole. I've done mm. a bit of a deep dive myself. There are some pictures there. Um, there's pictures of the sort of, uh, you know, of the what they built around the whole. I suppose you could say there's pictures of that there, and you can do tours of the place, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Like now, it's open to the public, and you know, you can mm. go in and blah blah blah. Um, it's a really interesting thing. I think that the most interesting part about it is when you take out all the stuff about, you know, the demons and, and all this sort of thing, the fact that someone would commission time to make something like this if there was nothing there to cover up, sort of, I don't know, necessarily makes sense. Or maybe it does. I don't know. You know, but is no, it, you're right. was there some you're weird right. stuff going on there, you know? Uh, you're you're definitely onto something. I mean, there was definitely it was put there for a purpose. The question is, what was the purpose? Mm. And, and as we've discussed in this episode, the purpose seems to be at least unusual, 
at least um, unorthodox, whatever it is, it's quite hard to just readily say, oh, well, this is a watchtower, or oh, this is a, a guardhouse, or this is a trading post. Uh, it's way big to be any of those things. And again, as we said earlier, it doesn't really have any reason to exist there. And, you know, you can say, well, things don't need a reason to exist, and that, and that is true, but we're talking about actual brick and mortar here where labour and money and, and, and things like that are involved. So is it possible, Em, and that I suppose it was commissioned for its purpose, as we suggest in this episode? Yeah, it's entirely possible. You know, it's... it's oh, I don't know. It's I'm, I'm trying to kind of wrap my head around... The, the meaning that the the point of it all and I'm, I'm sort of drawing blanks especially the part <clears throat> about arrows facing inward yeah you know what I mean like that I just don't understand why they would do something like that why they would invert the castle why they would fortify it from, from the well, inside unless like here's a sorry to cut you off there Here, here's a, a just a random sort of um idea like maybe it was built as a sort of um practice siege castle if you will where like yeah. it was built by the military at the time to sort of train you know so that they could train firing in arrows in into the castle through the castle walls and just maybe it was some type of weird military experiment but that doesn't explain why they built it where they built it mm. yeah it's a very it's a very strange one because you'd imagine with prague you know, obviously they say always be close, like the water source hmm. is a really mm-hmm. important thing. Um, I mean, Prague, obviously, as we know, there, there, it's not like there's no water source around there. No, no. Um, it's like a huge ass river and all yeah, that. Yeah, so I, I don't fully understand why you'd build it 50 kilometers outside kilometers of it. So, yeah. Then again, 50 kilometers is probably a good a good that's a good spin it's a good distance i suppose back yeah then. especially back yeah. then yeah 50 50 kilometers is a good spin <laughs> like even you know for us like it's mm. it's not exactly it's a couple of days walking yeah yeah um well yeah it, i don't know i mean well so i suppose a good question to ask would be what series of events do you believe happened that led them to building the castle over the hole was it a situation that happened because of the hole was it yeah was it was it something that came from the hole was it like volcanic activity geological activity was it potentially supernatural bananas activity maybe it was a case of 200 army men ab- accidentally marched into the fucking hole and they said here let's put a build something around this stupid <laughs> fucking thing will you to cover it up you know before some other fucking Egypt fucking sends his troops down through the hole as yeah, well you know I mean it could be something like that what's interesting is that whole part about putting the prisoners down into the hole and them mm. freaking out you know um, I don't know I'm just I'm just trying to think like that could be something that happened after the fact yeah yeah someone's yeah. Like, well That's- it was built <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of that. Like that part is almost secondary. I mm. wouldn't worry so much about that if we could even. I'm quite worried about it, Robert. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if we could hypothesize why the castle was put there, I think that mm. would at least give us an answer as to uh, a more plausible explanation. Yeah. But I really don't I, have one. Yeah, I can't come up with that. The only thing I can think is that it was a bad shout. It was the kids' first time setting up. You know, so like at some point, someone has to fucking be the person in charge. Maybe they just had a bit of a dolt in charge of, you know, getting a castle together. Maybe, and, and to be honest, if that's the most plausible situ- like explanation, which it kind of sounds yeah, like, it sounds it's, like it, it might it's be, not. Yeah. Well, well, it, it's the most plausible. But what I'm trying to say is, it's not very plausible. No, it's like you can see it happening, but back then it would have taken a lot of manpower to mm. do something like that. Yeah, a lot of questions, obviously. Like, and, yeah, yeah, it would have been questioned a hundred times, and I would imagine resources would have <clears throat> rather have been spent elsewhere. So we have no idea, guys, mm. why this castle was built over this hole and we really have no idea i suppose what could be in the hole like except yeah. i suppose maybe some crazy gases from maybe it's like fucking you know like fracking mm. where like mad gas comes up from these pockets and uh, like natural gas 
Like, I wonder if being dunked down into that shit would make you go fucking loony. I'd say it would, like, mm. you know. It could, Yeah, it could be something like that. But you'd imagine that you'd need to, you know, like, you'd need to stay down there for some time before your hair starts yeah. going white and you'd fucking freak out altogether. You'd think, yeah. again, I don't know, like, I don't know enough about geology and what's underneath maybe you know. that's just an exaggerated version of the tale like maybe the tale happened and he was sent down there and he came up fucking tripping like and just going mad yeah, yeah. and then the rest of it was sort of added to the tale as we were so familiar with now at this point that's true that, maybe, like, maybe it was just like a really deep hole and he just fucking freaked out a bit do you know what yeah, I mean it was totally. actually fine sure remember we talked about this before people with the spring heel jack episode um, yeah where people used to be fainting and all because they got frights yeah. Yeah. You know, so maybe it yeah. was something like that. And this is way before Spring Hill Jack. This yeah, this is at a time where folklore, uh, supernatural tales, uh at a time when people believed in those things, the lines were very much blurred, as mm. we said, uh, not far off the time as actually a matter of fact the Thirty Years War and all that, that was when the vampire tri- or the werewolf trials were. That was when we, we covered the werewolf trials were during the Thirty Years War. Yeah, yeah. It was at that time was when people were believing in werewolves and all that. So very supernatural, very spooky. Is it possible that they told this guy beforehand, like you're going to Huska, we're going to lower you down the hole. There's monsters there, there's demons there, it's a possessed gate. And basically, he drove himself to some type of madness yeah. or hysteria. <clears throat> Could be. Maybe he was a bit crazy beforehand. Maybe yeah. he was, you know, yeah. um, I thought that, you yeah. know, having some hallucinations and stuff like that, suffering from some or, sort of mental illness. Maybe he was letting on that he was crazy when he got out, just so he'd be left free. See, now it would be very clever if he did that. That'd be a good shout. Yeah, I probably yeah. would have done that. Yeah, that's probably what I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, I'm going to like fucking mad as shit when they bring me back over. <laughs> I'm going to get some of this chalk down here on this cave. I'm going to rub yeah, it on my hair. And then when I get back up, I'm going to start going, oh, oh, oh. That's and, fucking uh, crazy down there, governor. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah so, that, so that could be it, guys. Mm. And, uh, we hope you enjoyed this little sort of delve into house gets our second haunted spooky building and, yeah. and I, I really enjoy doing mm. these actually there's sort of Huska has been one that's been hanging over our head for quite a number of months oh, actually man. yeah I think and, I, I finished the notes on this like what I, I, I was about to say six months ago five. but we've, been, we've only been doing this like what three, three and a half, and a half months. months yeah <laughs> yeah I think I think Huska was one of the first five or six episodes mm-hmm. written and it just happened by happenstance it wasn't a thing that it was planned or anything that it just sort of got pushed back and pushed back and that was because we did the Loftus Hall episode yeah. we felt like that we didn't want to do to another do. building the next month or whatever yeah yeah sure. and then other things just started to come before it like oh we've set up a Patreon let's do a more current episode yeah, where we yeah. talk about that and blah 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 and it just ended up being a thing where both of us as well found interesting topics that we wanted to do like really quickly so mm. Huska took the, bat, the, the back seat but Eamon have you enjoyed your trip to Huska Castle? I have uh, I, I would say to anyone who hasn't visited Prague and potentially has an opportunity to to go and do it it's a wonderful mm. place magical almost very yeah, is, very yeah. beautiful city um, mm. definitely cheapest chips cheapest chips yeah cheapest chips mm. no, well I suppose yeah we're European so it's like it's a nice you could do a nice weekend break or whatever mm. um, but definitely for me man if I ever go back again I will be traveling to Huska Castle because I want to take yeah. a look at this place for sure absolutely I'm kind of raging I didn't miss it there's mm. also actually speaking about Mengele and Nazis and all that shit there is actually a concentration camp near there called Terrazin um, and, and I actually missed the uh, bus to get go to Terrazin because it was, it was a very early morning bus and I was like a sloth at the time so <laughs> that, that was not that was not happening but I would lion. definitely check out yeah at the time I was uh, mad for the lion so <laughs> uh, I'd definitely check out Terrazin if I was back there for sure and anything to add Eamon before we wrap this biatch up no I think that's good uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode um, like I said yeah keep hitting us up with the kind of topics that you are interested in and um, we're taking inspiration from what the patreons are saying at the moment mm-hmm. i know the next one that i am looking into is probably going to be the beast of bray road um, mm-hmm. i'm going to check out the flatwoods monster after that or the flatwoods yeah, entity I'm... it was like a weird alien thing um there's two i'm looking at is ogo pogo and ogo, uh, ogo. and the uh, we which are again yeah, both yeah. suggested by our patrons and uh 
Uh, we've also got Bigfoot in the pipeline, guys. It's mm. it's been it's been planned. Yeah, Bigfoot um, is going to be like that's going to, as you were saying, that's going to be a multiple episode. Bigfoot is going to be. Trust me when I say it's multiple. Not for um, we're not trying to drag out Bigfoot. What we're going to do is we're going to give him the attention that he mm. deserves, and. I want to put it all together. I want to stitch every episode together into like a mega episode and have it ad free for patrons and in like basically a fucking seven, eight hour like compendium. Yeah. I don't know what that word means, but I think it's right. Compendium, a big ass compendium, Bigfoot. So it has almost everything of note. It won't have the fucking Jimmy down the road seeing a fucking shadow in the bushes stories. It'll have everything that like you might not know and that I don't currently know. I'm doing everything. I'm researching the origins. I'm fucking researching the shit Mm. that came before Bigfoot. Native American stuff. We'll have everything in. There's a lot of lot of good stuff about the Native American stuff with Bigfoot. Did you know that there's actually an Irish Bigfoot society? We could try to get them in for a couple of interviews. Uh, They go up around Glendalough looking for uh, Bigfoot. What would Bigfoot oh, be? Oh, very good, yeah. Uh, Cus, sure Cus Moore. Uh, That'd be his name in Irish, wouldn't it? All right. Cus Moore, yeah, it could be, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk to them, lads. But uh, I think that's about it, folks. Um, I've been Tommy Pubes, and with me is... Uh, 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 what was it? T- tennis ball Pringle packet? I think it was something like something that, like yeah. Something like that, yeah. We'll go with that. And we've been Monster Fuzz. Thanks for listening, Take guys. Take care.